absolutely ludicrous. Yeah. Um, obviously, he made a good start to the season, but uh, whew, settle down. Yeah. So first of all, you know, it's a bit slimming. So that and more coming up as myself and Paddy are here to answer your questions. As transfer deadline day is over, the window is slammed shut. And we're here to talk through it. Yep, why not? First off, I'm going to start from Chris Chris. So good they named him twice. <laughs> will Bruno Fernandes flourish under Solskjaer? Will United get a striker? Well, we know the answer to the second What's the latest? Point. Um, <laughs> oh, the, what's the latest? <laughs> I think uh, with Igalo arriving, that fills that question. And, you know, to be honest, I don't mind this, uh, at least starting with the second part of it. I don't mind this for, for United. <laughs> it's a little bit of a low-risk one, obviously coming in on loan. Um, and I think that's a, it's a nice way to bolster the squad without taking too much of a risk. Yeah, is he one of those that you can bring him in for the team, and then as soon as Rashford's fit again, you could be like, yeah, get on the bench. Yeah, and listen, if he knows his role. If it doesn't work out, he's gone in, in summer anyway. Yeah. You know, so, and if it does, fantastic. They've probably got themselves a little bit of a bargain. So on Bruno uh, Fernandes, I think mm. this is, uh, I mean, this guy has been linked with so many English clubs for yeah. so long now. And I don't think that too many people have actually seen him play. I myself have only sort of caught him in, in sort of glimpses, but mm. sort of reading uh, behind the sort of behind the scenes from a few people I trust in Portugal, he sounds like a really nice player yeah. for United to have. He's, he's a bit more mature, you know, he's done the rounds, he's played abroad before in Italy when he was a bit younger, and I think it could be a, a good signing for United to have. I think that's the key there. They're not, United are not bringing in uh, a foreign talent from Portugal who's a young, exciting yeah. prospect like Ronaldo and came over. He's yeah, 26. Yeah, yeah. He's been around, he's played European football a long time. Yeah. Like they're bringing in, yeah, a mature player. This I, isn't... Exactly. And maybe he doesn't have the, the goal scoring, you know, results that he yeah. that he does, um, you know, that he did have at, at Lisbon. But I think he's going to be a very nice uh, creative piece for, yeah. for United to have. Yeah, absolutely. So to the next one, the most unlikely rumour. From George Braley, this question comes. The most unlikely rumour, uh, Gareth Bale returning to Spurs. Yeah? I say that, not because I'm salty that I got excited that it didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> but just a little bit. It's just, yeah. it's just never going to happen. That Every time there's rumours of him leaving and even Real Madrid saying, eh, we don't want too much of a fee for him. Um, as with last summer, and then Perez said, actually we do, and stopped his China move. Um, it's clear that Zidane doesn't want him to go. Whatever their sort of strange relationship, He's always more than happy to take him back into the squad, give him the games, and then at times Bale does sort of repay yeah. him. He started the season really well, yeah, especially yeah, that last summer yeah. wasn't so good. And also, I don't know too much, but from what I've seen, his agent seems a real ball lake to work with. Yeah, I think so. I think we spoke mm. about this off camera. I think Bale's definitely his meal ticket. Yeah. And uh, as a consequence, he's potentially maybe overly involved in you yeah. know, um, certain things. And yeah, I think a lot of clubs are probably scared off on it, that. Yeah, exactly. If it's yeah. like a quick sort of, yeah, we could do the deal in a few yeah. hours, but yeah. it doesn't seem like, Bale's deal is going to be a long drawn out saga. Correct. It and, is not going to be a Friday night. One. What yeah. about Richarlison <laughs> to uh, Barcelona? Also a ridiculous rumor. Yeah. Right. Anyway, I got confused, right, the next day after I heard it, whether they rubbished that the deal was ever going to happen, or they rubbish that it was even a thing. Yeah. I don't even know if the bid happened. Or it was, I mean, 85 million, yeah. I think, or Pounds, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Pounds, which is absolutely ludicrous. Yeah. Um, obviously, he made a good start to the season, but uh, whew, settle down. Yeah. I remember when he moved from Watford to Everton, I was saying on the channel yeah. that 50 million was ridiculous yeah. then. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So 85 now. Yeah. Um, right, next up from, I think, Luke T, is how we'll go with it. Uh, worst signing of the January transfer window. Always hard to know, of course. We're just yeah. starting out and we've got to give everyone a chance, but I think the Piontek one to Herta seems a little bit smelly for me. I oh. mean, if you have a look, obviously this was a player that was linked with, yeah, your guys, Spurs and also Chelsea, but neither club would pay more than 20 million for him. Um, and which is peanuts for them. Which is peanuts. Yeah. And, you know, they were probably looking for a loan more than anything. But, you know, Hertha then stepped in and paid 27 million mm. euros for him. And it sort of smells a bit like a, you know, club, smaller club with big ambitions and a bit of money now, um, just coming in and overpaying for someone that no one really was sure that they wanted. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think this could have the potential to backfire for Hertha. Who knows? Um, mm. uh, he obviously made his debut uh, last night off the bench. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think that this one has a, the potential to go a bit bad. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm trying to think of someone who's bad. As you said, it's difficult to yeah, it really is. judge him. I think um, Cedric Suarez joining Arsenal very much seems like a, just another body in there. 
I'm not yeah. sure he's an upgrade on what they've got. I think Suarez's time to move was a couple of seasons ago. Yeah. And I think he was linked with Spurs at the time. He was, he was at a, Everton. Yeah, he was a great little player then. Mm. And uh, to be honest, actually, still obviously is a, is a nice player. Yeah. But, um, to go to Arsenal on loan, when was the last time a Southampton player went to Arsenal on loan? Who knows? Yeah, yeah it's just I, a bit of a weird one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bit odd, but yeah. I get... He's not been bought in to no. be like the star right back. Correct. He is another Correct. body, but yeah. From uh, Big Buster Brown, rate these transfers so far one to five. Mm. One, I guess, being the worst. Yeah. Five being the best. Uh, Erling Haaland. It's got to be a six, isn't he? I mean, that <laughs> so star. Far, yeah. That star. <laughs> I mean, yeah, 20 million or whatever it was, yeah, yeah. five. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of add-ons to that, but it's yeah, at yeah. least justified everything so far. Oh. Ashley Young. Three. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. 1.5 million. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Bruno Fernandes. Again, we don't know yet. Yeah. Um, I can't make the, the rule over him. That's what they're asking. That's what Big Basket Brown is asking. <laughs> three. Yeah, three. Okay. Dan, <laughs> Danny Olmo. You're just going to go three all the time? Danny Olmo to a No, Lazio, four. I think he's a really yeah. good player. Okay, okay. Ericsson. Um, four, he'll be great for them. Okay, and La Celso, of course. Now he's technically signed on a full Oh, no, he's technically, yeah. yeah. Uh, another four, actually. Okay. I think right. these are really good signings. Pretty optimistic this morning, yeah. Matt. Yeah, no, nice. Good to see. Um, right, next up, Dante Spina has said, which clubs across Europe's uh, leagues have stood out this window with some exceptional business? Actually, I would say Inter, uh, on yeah. that note. Um, you know, they haven't, uh, they've brought in three interesting players for me, which is young at a bargain, you know, price, yeah. to be honest. Lots of lots of experience can definitely add something to that squad. Um, then we've got um, uh, Victor Moses, who I was actually surprised he left Chelsea when he did. He yeah. actually had one of his strongest sort of seasons and a half there, and he arrives from um, from Turkey, I think, where it hasn't really worked yes. out for him. And then of course Ericsson. Now it just seems it just seems like they've got a plan at Inter, mm. and uh, they're really buying around that plan. And I like that approach. You know? Yeah. Remains to be seen if it pays off, but I, I do like that approach. Obviously, they uh, they believed that they needed a, a bit of uh, backup on the on the wings and on the fullback positions, and they needed a key playmaker, yeah. and they went out and got it. I think they were also linked with Vidal. That didn't quite work yeah. out. But I think there's a there's a nice little squad there to challenge um, to challenge Juventus. Yeah, they've done brilliantly. I think go Dortmund as well. So yeah. yesterday, Emre Chan yeah. moves in on loan with. Is it, is it an obligation to buy? No, but it's no. pretty much understood that it's it's going to happen. Right. Yeah, yeah. So they obviously got rid of Alcacer for 23 yeah. plus some add-ons. 23, what they paid for him about seven months ago, as yeah, it was yeah. anyway. <laughs> um, then they obviously brought in Harlan to replace him. So in the end, came, Kansas, you know, yeah. came in with, uh, with with a nice little window as well. And uh, I, I think that's good. Yeah. I will also give a shout out, as I did the other day on our podcast, um, to Newcastle. Mm -hmm. I feel like they, they struggled, definitely. Jean Linton was having a really sort of poor start to the season. Um, and they defensively weren't so sure. They fought in Danny Rose, plenty of Premier League experience, can be a top player. Valentin Lazaro, who had a fantastic season with Hertha before yep. moving to Inter. Correct. Didn't work out there. And Nabil Bentaleb, who saw great quality at Spurs. Attitude problems led him to leave. Attitude problems then led him to leave Schalke as well. But he well. also had a season and a half at Schalke where he was very, very handy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Exactly. So if if Steve Bruce can you know get Ben Sleb without the issues, just playing his football, I think that's three really good yeah. signings. Yeah. Especially when you know we always hear they can't get any good deals in January. I would, so. Yeah, I would also say just quickly, I think United have done okay. In yeah, this okay. Yeah. As well, because I mean, you know, there was a lot of complaints on Twitter about they started off with Haaland and Cavani in their sights mm. and ended up with you know Igalo. But to be honest. I think with Fernandez, it's a nice, smart signing, and Igalo is a, is a low budget option for them to have. Yeah. They've got rid of Rojo and, and sort of cleaned up a little Young, bit around the yeah. place. Young, exactly. So I think they've they've done okay. Yeah. Solid enough effort, for sure. Yeah. We're praising United. Yeah, see? What has yeah. happened? We're, we're overcompensating. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, from uh, Josh the Boy, is it strange that Man City didn't sign anyone? I thought since City were behind in the Premier League and aside being very inconsistent, I thought they would spend big in January, especially on a new centre-back. Well, they're obviously gambling on Laporte's return, yep. um, not only return, but him staying yes. fit as well. Yep. I did think, however, so yesterday Angelino left to Leip was it Leipzig. Leipzig on loan, yeah, exactly. Yep. Very kind of odd for me. Now, don't get me wrong, I know that he's not, he certainly isn't the player that they thought they bought back mm. from PSV uh, in July. Benjamin Mendy's serial injury threat mm. to himself, um, always injured. 
Zinchenko, not quite sure at that level. Certainly, I don't think Zinchenko is a clearly better option than Angelino. I think maybe he's just a bit more um, versatile because obviously Zinchenko yeah. can play further afield as well, whereas Angelino really is just a, a fullback or a wingback. Like, in the fully fit squad, yeah, Angelino's third yeah. choice left back, but I feel like they might have been leaving themselves short, especially yeah, with the injuries they've seen. Um, why they didn't sign anyone? <sighs> the problem is, because they're inconsistent, you have you think, oh, they need to go and sign someone who's more consistent. But they've got such phenomenal players, you can't guarantee game time. Yeah. You're not signing anybody in January who's taking the place of Sterling, Aguero, Kevin De Bruyne, yeah. um, you know, even Laporte when he comes back, or Edison, the key players. If Sterling's having a bad season, he's still Raheem Sterling. Yeah, sure. So to buy someone better than him is going to cost you a lot, and it's going to be very unlikely. Do you also think that maybe that maybe they're just going to focus on the Champions League now? Like, the, the Premier League is obviously not really... Yeah. It's not, not going to get them anywhere. They'll so finish why spend more. 50 million or, or more, potentially, yeah. on an overpriced player in January, waiting yeah. to play him for the new season, and really just focus on the Champions League? Yeah. yeah. I mean, probably so. And they're also Man City, so people up their prices whenever City exactly. can call Exactly, especially in January. Yeah. Especially in January, yeah. Yeah, when, you're, when you seem to be a bit desperate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're up. Uh, next up, Ali Rami has said, now that Liverpool almost won the Premier League, should they get a new player in? Well, let, let's let's think in terms of summer. Yeah, of course. So let's say yeah. they, they've won the Premier League. How how are they going to improve? Yeah, it's a great question. I think we we spoke about this before the start of the season, mm. and I think my answer would remain the same. It would probably be the centre of defence. Yeah. Um, someone else there. Um, Matip's been good, of course. Um, and uh, then you know um, Van Dijk. Van Dijk, Gomez. sorry, yeah. and Gomez are also Van Dijk's there as a, as a yeah. you know he's going to be the first choice. Can they get someone else to put pressure on, on Gomez and Matip, maybe? We'll see. Not Lovren. <laughs> yeah, not Lovren. Um, I think the other question would then be what happens in the middle of the park. But Henderson has been very, very good yeah. this season, as we spoke about. Henderson's so. been good. Yeah. Rumours in the last few days that Wijnaldum's unsure of his future, yeah. entering the last 18 months. They're he still, said he'll talk about it after the season. They've still got Keita that doesn't get you know that much game time yeah. around those sort of main ones. Fabinho started on the bench. Lallana's the the expiring at the end yeah. of the season. So maybe those are the two positions that they need yeah. to look at. But it is a luxury position for them to be in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I think they should take a leaf out of City's book. If Laporte is their Van Dijk, yeah. and Van Dijk gets injured for six months, yeah, then they're in a little yeah. bit of trouble, to be yeah. honest. So. so now to something a bit new, and uh, as some of you who follow us on Instagram, and if you don't, make sure you do, it's at one football, of course. We asked you a question, we asked you a poll on there, who is more likely to win the league with their new club, Haaland or Ericsson? Now, at the time of, uh, of, of filming uh, this morning, <laughs> we have the results in around 20,000 people voted, which was really, really cool, and the winner, of 59% was Haaland. So Ericsson coming in at 49 with Inter. Mm. Both teams, Inter four points off the top and Dortmund four points four off points the top. top. But yeah. you guys believe that Haaland is more of a chance to win the title with his new club. I'm gonna agree. Agree? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna agree ever so slightly. I think it's kind of a second part to this question. Haaland will have more of an impact mm. on whether or not Dortmund will win the league yeah. than Ericsson does on Inter. Oh, I'm not sure. Ha Haaland's going to be, you know, goal getting. He's going to be a, a focal point of play at Dortmund, who now, so like I said, don't have another striker, sort of a main option. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Inter Milan, with or without Ericsson, mm. they've still got quality, you know, doing their bits all over the rest of the park. And Ericsson is more of a luxury player, whereas Haaland is a necessity and will be brilliant. That's fine, but yeah. I think, you know, the question, coming back to the question, you know, who's yeah. more likely to win the title yeah. with this new club? I actually think that Ericsson has more of a chance, yeah. simply because it's a two-horse race. And if, oh, you look, okay, if you yeah. look at the Bundesliga, you've still got Leipzig on top, then you've got Gladbach in the mix, you've got Bayern, Bayern of course, yeah. in the mix, and Dortmund are fourth at the moment. Still just four points off, and the, the race is super, mm. super tight. But I think uh, with the signings, as I said before, that Inter made, I think they may be in a slightly better position yeah. to, to challenge for the title. Perfect. Well, thank you to everyone that voted. Yeah, as make well sure, of that. course, you do follow us on Instagram. There's a lot of you uh, who probably do already, but if you don't, please make sure that you do. So, next up, we've got another quick fire from no. Samir7YT. No. So, a scale of one to 10, rate these chances that they'll succeed in their new club. Okay, yep. So, we'll give this one low. Sure, yeah. 10, they're in a blinding season. Yeah. Uh, Ericsson at Milan. Uh, 7.5. Oh, go for 0.5s in yeah. there as well. Why not? Why not? Bergvine at Tottenham. Uh, oh, six. I think it's going to take him a while. We don't know yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, get some Fernandez at Tottenham. Five point five. Bruno Fernandez at United. Six. Uh, Pablo Mari at Arsenal. Six. 
I, I haven't seen anything of him, but from what I've heard... Uh, it's a very Edu signing. I think we're talking about him later <laughs> anyway. <Edu>. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, and last but not least, Haaland at Dortmund. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. pretty good so far, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I would say a 7.5, because I think it's probably going to be hard yeah. for him to sustain this sort of momentum. We've sung his praises already. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Perfect. And to our next one then from uh, Max Castarena, could Coutinho go back to Barcelona? Of course, on loan currently at Bayern Munich. Hmm. Wow, I mean, I think that not necessarily because Barca are going to recall him mm -hmm. and say, you know, we desperately need you back, but because Bayern aren't going to pay that 100 plus million for him. And Coutinho's a great player, shows some really good quality mm -hmm. of the season. I just think, especially he's going to be 28 by the end of the season, I think Bayern could spend that money better elsewhere. Yeah, and million. for that case, I think he will go back to Barcelona, but whether he'll have a place there or not is a completely different yeah, question. Yeah, agreed, agreed. I mean, they've just bought a couple of young yeah. uh, players as well, so there's some good talent coming through there. I just don't think Coutinho has a place from at Barcelona. Yeah, I mean, anymore. obviously this changes because he left under an old manager yeah. in Valverde. He's coming back under a new manager. Who knows? Yeah. New managers can change like that. But as you say, Mateus came in um, from Brazil. Uh, the Trincao, I think you pronounced his name, came in from Braga as well. Barca are definitely signing players for the future. Mm -hmm. Certainly, Arthur and De Jong have massive roles to play yeah. in the Barcelona midfield. Whether there's a space for Coutinho, I'm not convinced. And there's also the Neymar thing, and we don't need to get too much into that, but uh, they <laughs> that will come will, back for him for That sure. will definitely roll yeah, around yeah. in the summer. Exactly. Uh, right, uh, next up for me from Josh J. Mm -hmm. Do you think the Wolves could push for Champions League football this year or next year? I think this year is going to be a bit tough. Yeah. The gap is just a little too um, too big, considering mm. the other clubs that are in the mix there. But listen, Wolves are on a good path. You know, yeah. they've, uh, I think they've recruited quite well. They need to continue to do so because that is literally the difference between them sustaining this. They yeah. don't have a long-term infrastructure to support constant sort of Champions yeah. League challenges. So they need to recruit well and they need to make sure that their coaching situation is nice and stable. But at least uh, the signs are there that they are the next in line past yeah. that top six and Leicester, I would say. Yep. So uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how they they go into next season yeah. after such a positive season so far. And they're not good. If they go crazy, then that's when they'll be sort of stung yeah. and they'll go further down and then you end up in the championship with players on, you know, 150K and Correct. you've got big money. And, yeah. yeah but, We've seen it before. You know, yeah, exactly. QPR before. are the prime example. Yeah, yeah. So you need to go with... You need to build, you know, Wolves, there's no rush for them to get into the Champions League. Follow the Leicester playbook, yeah. it's the best way for them yeah. to be able to sort of... Daniel Podence for this sign as well, really yeah. good signing. Exactly, so really smart yeah. signings, great network, obviously internationally. So yeah. if they continue with that, then then why not next yeah. season? Yeah. Uh, so from John Abrahamson, 04, yeah. is Pablo Murray going to be good oh. at Arsenal? You've just admitted that you've not seen him. So I, I haven't <laughs> seen too much of him. Um, I did speak with our uh, Spanish newsroom members mm -hmm. uh, here at One Football, and he was... Um, on loan, I believe, at Valladolid or maybe Deportivo. Deportivo it was. Yeah, or Deportivo, yeah, yeah. that was it. Um, in Spanish second division. Yeah, he spent a lot of time in Spain. Yeah. Um, I think Mallorca he was when mm. he was a kid as well. But also played some good football in, in his native Brazil yeah, as yeah. well. So, as I said, this feels like an Edu signing. He sees something there. Yeah. I mean, look, look, if, it, again, this is something like, you know, everyone said, oh, Ashley Young to Inter Milan. If Arteta has a plan for Mari and says, you know what, I know he's not the best yeah. player, but I like the way he brings the ball out from the back. Yeah. Or he suited the specific style of play that Arteta wants. He could be brilliant. Correct, correct. I mean, yeah, no, he's not coming in with a reputation of being a fantastic no. defender, but it could work. They're not spending the world for him. Yeah, they yeah. obviously need uh, better options in mm. defence there, so it's not a it's not a bad thing to bring yeah. in another body there. So let's just see. I think the expectations are low, and let's just see. How yeah, it exactly. Goes. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's not going to be a, a train wreck because no one's expecting no. a world class superstar. I mean, it reminds me of that Gabriel. Remember they bought Gabriel for Paulista. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that was uh, who was that from again? Uh, he ended up at Villarreal. Yeah, Valencia, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He, went, he came from Valencia. Uh, Villarreal went to Valencia. Ah, went to Valencia. Think, Valencia yeah. Okay, might be the other way around as well. But you know, he still played a couple of games and didn't quite work out. But maybe. Yeah. That's you know the sort of transfer that you can compare this one to. Yeah. Yep. Uh, right. Last but not least, from Bagesh Bobate, who has said, "Hey, Matt and Paddy, what was the first ever football match you guys watched <laughs> in a stadium? Was it memorable? Also, why do you guys wear black in 90% of the videos? <laughs> <laughs> black T-shirts on." So first of all, you know it's a bit slimming. So you it's, know. it's slimming. It's like the Berlin vibe. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's a bit of a mix of that. My first game <laughs> was. 
uh, Leeds and West Ham at uh, Upton Park, actually. What? It was memorable wow. mostly because it was my first one, which I think you can say yeah. about a few situations yeah. in life. <laughs> um, but uh, it was a nil-nil draw, oh. uh, but I enjoyed watching it. There was some uh, good little Australians running yeah. around at that point, and uh, yeah, I think that was uh, that was my first was, one. Was Harry Kuehl was that Kuehl, a bit too Viduka, early? Yeah. yeah, I mean, again, oh. you, you know I'm a bit older, so uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I think mine was... Mine was before that, actually. 97. Yeah. 1997, Spurs played Sheffield Wednesday. Okay, yeah. And it was that orange Sheffield Wednesday yeah, kit. Yeah, remember I remember, the, yeah. The yeah. Sanderson, was it? Yep, yep. Yeah, the orange away the kit. Red sponsor, yeah. Yeah, I, th I believe they had Benito Carboni. I was gonna say, was Di Canio there at that point yet, or? I'm not sure Di You need to look there. up those teams. I need to look up, but I remember Spurs, that David Ginola scored um, after signing for Spurs. Spurs won 3-2. And uh, I remember sat in the upper tier and I couldn't quite see above the thing, so I was kind of leaning on my dad's shoulder on the seat. Nice. But Spurs won and yeah, that was it. Four years old and I was hooked and yep. I've regretted it ever since. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Could have been worse. Could have gone for Sheffield Wednesday. Course, exactly. Yeah. It's a lovely memory. Yeah. It's a lovely memory. So thank you for all of your questions. Let us know of your thoughts in the comment section. Of course, so much has happened over the transfer window. And whilst you're at it, don't forget that every single Wednesday night we'll post in our community tab on YouTube where you can leave your questions for the, the following Friday's Q&A. So from all of us, um, well, just me and Paddy, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>